Welcome back to the channel. We are set up on top of a bluff out here in the Baraboo Hills and today I'm joined by a friend of mine, Zibu. And Zibu has been teaching alongside me at the Baraboo High School and we connected over the springtime semester because I was helping a student with his algebra work and Zibu was the teacher. And Zibu came into my classroom the other day and mentioned that he would like to try a little landscape painting. He's familiar with the work of Monet and Van Gogh. And of course, those are two of my favorite artists. Zibu, I do have a gift for you. This is a palette knife and we're going to be using this today. But this is actually made in China. Dual paint on there. We'll start with a little drawing lesson though. Are you familiar with drawing techniques at all or are we starting from scratch? Uh, I know nothing about drawing. Perfect, you're in the right place. I have a marker and I have a piece of plexiglass. First thing we're going to do is, this is six inches by eight inches. Okay, our little painting panel. Okay. Which is a nice size for a study. The outer edges of the painting mm -hmm. is the format. You could also think about it as a frame. Uh, put it on the top of the glass. Yes. This is a way that I introduce people to the concepts of drawing. Now I have made a crosshair, kind of like a grid, three inches down and four inches across, okay? To make a crosshair with a little so, ruler. So three inches, here's a three inches? Three inches, yes. Three inches down here. Okay. Great. Now measure the same on your canvas and draw the same crosshairs, three inches and four inches on the canvas. Here is our our um, viewfinder for today. Mm -hmm. What you can do in the same way that you can crop with your camera, you know, you can zoom in, you can pull out. Mm -hmm. With this, I want you to begin to think about a arrangement or a composition that you are very interested in. So sometimes what I ask myself is, what is the thing I am most interested in? I happen to like some of the trees and I like the far off bluffs in the distance and I like some of the sky. So when I find something that I like, I will hold it out and I will close one eye to make it a little bit easier. And I will take my marker around the shapes that I am seeing. So you can kind of see that I've made a little bit of a marker sketch here. I have the up and down crosshairs on the piece of plexiglass and I also have that on my canvas. So all I have to do at this point is transfer the information from my marker on plexiglass onto the canvas. Did you come up with something good? Yeah, that's very nice. This is very good. This is the bluff, this is the tree line, mm -hmm. the line for the grass, and then some clouds. Yeah. Very good. You can put the cap back on the marker and we will use the pencil for the next step. We have the same crosshairs and it's the same division of space. Okay. I will transcribe this exact information that is here onto my canvas using the pencil. Mm -hmm. I can use this just the same as a ruler. This is the very center of the crosshairs, right? Mm -hmm. From here to here, it is maybe one inch, a little less than one inch, okay? But that's only on mine, yours is different. But I can also rest the tip of my lead pencil at the center and use my thumb as a measuring tool in the same way that I use a ruler and I can find that point. Okay. And then from there I can say this line travels this way for this far. I am only measuring using my pencil. Now I have this little tree right down there. If I measure from the center, the tip of my lead pencil to my thumb, that tree is there. I'm using the grid lines and a combination of the grid lines along with this measuring technique to create exactly what I have on my piece of glass onto the canvas. Can you see how I'm doing it? Yeah, so you always start from the origin, the center section. You can start from the center, but if it's easier for you maybe for this line here, it is easier to start from down here mm -hmm. because we have the same unit of grid on both, you can start either way. Okay. So try that. And if you need the ruler to do some measuring, you can use that too. I'll set the ruler right here. 
So this is exactly what I'm teaching my students. And eventually we will get rid of the piece of glass. It will happen in their mind. But I think it's important to show people how to do things accurately at the start. I already had a degree in art and everything by the time that I um, went back to school for teaching, you know. I have an art degree in uh, graphic design. Mm -hmm. um, I study at uh, Madison College for that. Mm -hmm. And I worked until the year 2008. Yeah, told me that. Yeah, and then I changed to uh, teaching. So things change, you know. Our, our lives are always changing. If you ask me, like, even like two years ago, the first day when I came to America, you said, oh, one day you're going to teach, be a substitute teacher in Baraboo. I mm -hmm. don't even know. What are... Well, I'm glad you're here because it's been nice to get to know you. Thank you so much. It was really nice to know you, though. I mean, we, I mean I, I'm, I'm always wanted to know something about art, but uh, I know it's, it's really hard, and some, sometimes people make it sound hard. Yeah. So like you have to have a talent. If you can't really make great work before 19 years old, then you're done or something. Mm-hmm. See that? There's a lot of myths about it, you know, and I think that at any age you can start, and at any age or any ability you can do something that is worthwhile for you at that moment. Zebo, to check your work, you can lay the the marker drawing on top, and you can see what is good and you can see what the problem is if you have a problem this will teach you to draw and when you read the book mm -hmm. drawing on the right side of the brain you will learn more and it will it will talk about this technique as well to get started so for you this is good actually for me this is good this is a a way for me to train my eye last night i googled that book yeah uh, there's like a worth book with it sure i've heard of it I think it's good. The workbook is good. It comes with the uh, piece of plastic that you are using now, I think. What is the artwork that you see in China now? I'm not sure what, what exactly. Yeah, I'm not really. I don't really know a lot of things about art. One idea that I have always enjoyed about the time that I spent studying the Chinese painters is that the idea of professional versus amateur the professional artist had to create a portrait of the patron, you know, maybe a ruler or someone who is important. And the amateur was hired by the government to walk around in nature and to absorb the ideas of nature. And then they would go back into their studio at a later time and create a painting based off of their feelings. Actually, the amateur was a higher ranking because they were paid by the government just to go around and enjoy themselves. Um, really? I don't know that. Oh, do you see the cattle down there, Zibu? There's yeah, some cattle. <laughs> they won't move too quickly to paint, maybe. Maybe one brush stroke for the cow. That's very good. You're doing a great job. All right, are you ready to move forward? That looks... Oh, you want to draw your clouds still? Yeah. Take your time. We're in no hurry out here. The cattle has gone behind the hill now, I think. The next thing to consider is the color. I'm going to squeeze out some paint for you. And the reason that we are wearing these is to observe the values of nature. Everything becomes red, but beyond that you can see the contrast of relative lightness and darkness, which is what values are. Yesterday, when we were in the art room, we talked about the idea that the, the grass and the ground plane is lighter than the trees. You can see that when you're wearing these glasses, is that right? You think the, the grass is lighter than trees? Yes. Yeah. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I think it's even lighter. I mean, the, the sky is definitely lighter. Yeah, a little bit. Mm -hmm. But you are correct. And yeah. then... And then it's the ground, and then it's the, you know, the, the hill and stuff. Yes, the very good. This one is actually the trees in front of us. Yes, that's very good. There's your white paint. Mm -hmm. This is a warm white paint. This will be useful in some areas. 
And anytime that you're mixing a warm color, such as the color of the grasses, mm -hmm. you will use the warm color, even to mix the clouds maybe. And maybe some white too. Oh, this is for what? For the, um, the, the warm white? Yeah, the warm white will be useful in place of white um, just because we do not have too much white. When you're mixing a cool color, such as the color of the hills in the background, mm -hmm. you will be um, using the cool white. And this is a warm white for mm -hmm. things like the foreground grasses. And now I've given you yellow ochre, which is a uh, earth, earth yellow. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's a nice yellow. Mm -hmm. It's a very useful yellow for in nature because this yellow is actually made with pigment iron oxide. So it is like a pigment that comes from the naturally from the ground okay, or from the rocks. Okay. This is called lemon yellow. Mm -hmm. It's a very bright lemony yellow. I'm giving you a limited arrangement of colors today. And the reason is, is that you can do something very good with less options sometimes. This is ultramarine blue. Mm -hmm. This is a violet blue. As I look out into nature, I can see some violet in those background bluffs. Yeah. Okay, so that will be a color useful in that area. Prussian blue. This will be a good blue for mixing some of the colors of the trees. This is permanent rose. We will be mixing our greens. And when you mix a green, you will mix blue with yellow. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's too bright. Okay, the, the green that you will get mm -hmm. and you need to make neutralize it, it. Yeah, make it darker mm -hmm. and more neutral. Mm -hmm. A little bit of red will do that. Okay. okay. So this is just black. That is actually, that's a blue color. That's Prussian blue. Okay. okay, so if we, I'll show you. This is a very different blue than the other one. We have some yellow, some red, some blue. I think that maybe this is a good combination of colors. Yeah. yeah. For, for learning how, you know, and, and later on you will add more colors once you are more comfortable. We talked yesterday about this idea of a color isolator. Yep. Okay, so what this is, is it's not a very high-tech tool at all. Let's talk briefly about the, the values that we're seeing as we look out into nature. We want to observe the landscape while looking through our red lens glasses again and uh, as we do so what do you say is the lightest thing that we see zebu the lightest thing yes mm. was it? it's the sky yeah the sky probably the clouds in the sky very good the sky in terms of our four planes is the lightest thing out there. What is the next lightest area that we see? Uh, in terms of the lightest, what would you mean? What is the, the sky is the lightest thing. What is the next lightest area that we see? I will say the, uh, the ground. Yes, very good. The ground is the next lightest area. It's a little bit darker than the sky, right? Yeah. Very good. And what is the next lightest area beyond the ground? Is the, the hill and stuff? The hills, very good. And finally, the darkest thing that we see is what? Yeah, uh, is the kind of the trees. Very good. Let's do a good job with those four masses that we see. When I talk about a mass, is that that mass of those foreground trees are, it kind of creates its own shape. And let's mix the color of the clouds to start things off today. I am I'm gonna ask you to hold up your little your little color isolator on some of those very bright white clouds and tell me what color you see when you look through that. I say it's just a little blue in the white. Okay. Very good. Why don't you take some of your warm white? Add just a, that uh, very pink color, add just a little bit of yellow to it, and then add a little bit of that, I'll call it black blue, that one that you thought was uh, black. A very small amount of that black blue. The black blue is actually called Prussian blue. So I'm going to add a little bit of yellow first. Just a touch of this brilliant uh, lemon yellow, the lemony yellow, not the earth yellow. 
I think you were right when you said uh, that they had a little bit of blue. The knife is a flexible blade. You will be able to mix it very thoroughly in that way. All right, and for the next color that you observed, let's take a look at the, the warm grasses through our little color isolator. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna observe the color of those grasses while looking through this hole that we have poked in this piece of cardboard. Okay, and tell me, what is that color that you see in those uh, warm grasses, the, the warm tops of that? Uh, when you talk about a worm, are you talking about like uh, the part that is pretty close to sweet? Or yeah. the, the part that is pretty close to ourselves? Yeah, I think the part that's maybe close to ourselves is a good starting point. That, that's a good point. There's a lot of different colors out there. And maybe we'll choose one for today. Like some warm white, and we're gonna get some earth yellow. Yeah, very good. Why don't you mix some of those two together? Take some of that warm white and a little bit of earth yellow. You will see when you hold it up, that works pretty well, actually. That was a very good observation. Now, the value of it, the relative lightness or darkness, needs to be slightly darker than the sky. Um, I think that. For me, this is a good place to be. That's what I observed. That earth yellow is a, a good yellow for landscape painting because it's made with pigment from the earth. Okay. Have you worked with oil paint before? No. Have you worked with watercolor? Yeah. A little bit. I, sure. Yeah, I know we could use trash and Uh-huh. All right, Zebu, the next darkest plane that you decided on was you said that those far off bluffs in the background are the, the next darkest color. And again, just like the grasses, there's many different colors in those background bluffs. I am interested in the color that is kind of the, the green that is being lit by the sun. And I'm going to mix that color by taking some of that black blue and a touch of lemon yellow Okay, that's gonna give a very neon green color. And I'm going to neutralize that green color by adding in just a little bit of this red. Okay, not too much red, because red is the complementary color of green. Oh, I'm sorry, you're talking about like the bluff? Yes, the far off bluff. And there is a very, um, there's a very interesting green color happening out there. And it's kind of a neutral green. So I'm taking some of that black blue mm -hmm. and I'm adding into it a little bit of this lemon yellow. Mm -hmm. And then I, that is a very intense bright green color. And I have neutralized that just with a little bit of my red color. And I'm adding a little bit of white to it just to get the value. The value that you stated earlier was that Cool, I would use cool white in this situation. This is what I'm coming up with for that color. It's a very gray green. Very nice. So do you think I need to add more white in it? I would, I would do this. You have a lot of blue. Blue is a very strong color in the paint. And so I would start about like that. Okay, now add in just a little bit of that. Very good. The blue kind of take, overtakes everything. We have plenty of that blue. You're in the right neighborhood. So I would say start there. Yeah, and maybe it, it came back on there because it was on your knife. We'll neutralize that green color out. Anytime that we add complementary colors to our mixtures, mm -hmm. it makes it neutralized. Okay, so neutralize is going to be become more like uh, gray. A very gray color. That's right. Now, Zebu, with what you with the color that you've mixed, hold up your knife so that you can see that color and hold it up against that bluff in the background. Yeah, it's going to be like a little bit darker, I think. Okay. All right, then add in add in whatever color um, to make it a little bit darker. The trick with landscape painting, of course, is that the sun is in and out of clouds today. 
which actually is a hard day to paint and continue to hold up your knife and decide to yourself what do you think needs to happen Definitely, uh, more darker and greener. great add a little more yellow to make it more green See how that little bit of yellow made it much more green, right? Yeah. Everything happens in a small increment or a small a small amount of paint can change the color very much. Yeah. It's it's good to just uh observe and to see sometimes, you know. And just to be out here and lose track of our words in a way. Finally it's closed. Very good. Hey, give me a pound. That's very good. Now let's talk about the color of the the foreground trees, our darkest mass. I think you'll agree with me. There is areas that are very light, not very light green, but they are green because the sun is... It's on the top, it's on them. Yep. And then there's areas where they are into shadow. Yep. So let's mix up one color that is the color of the trees, the lighter color, and then let's mix up one color that is the shadow color. Let's try to keep our value of the trees quite dark, which will help us to hold it together as a mass. I am taking some of that earth yellow and mixing in some of my blue black with it. And that might get us close to the, the green that we are seeing up there. Again, always taking time to hold my knife up and observe the color. This is the color that I arrived at, so maybe you just need a little bit more of that blue-black in there. Whoa! Oh, that's no good. Oh no, both of us! Welcome to landscape painting. This is how it is. It's getting close. Oh yeah, I like this. This is really, I think this is... Kind of like what, I'm, what I can see. And in terms of value, it will be closer to us. Um, we spoke yesterday about the idea of atmosphere and the idea that as we look out towards those distant hills, mm -hmm. we are looking through many layers of atmosphere. It's good because the darker the color is, the closer it will seem to us in terms of atmosphere. Yeah. The final thing I want you to mix is the color of the blue sky around the clouds okay? okay please mix that color and you can you can decide on that on your own i think a cool blue maybe will be your will be helpful for that area yeah when i'm trying to get some like uh, you know light grains i can just yes. mix them and then just after doing the whole mass i can just you know put those light grains in the place that where i think is going to be that's a good way to do it Good, then you can go ahead and I guess I need to give you a brush at this point. <laughs> all of the hard work of the painting has already been done. All you have to do now, I use a very big brush. So this is a nice brush. If you can handle this brush, my advice is to use this brush for most of the masses. Um, when you need to clean off your brush, there is some brush cleaning solution in here. You can wipe the paint out of the bristles of the brush and swirl it in there. Can you see that again? So uh, after after doing a certain... So I have, color... I have painted with some of my green color and I'm wiping the brush off in a paper towel. And now I can just kind of swish it out and there's some solution in there. Mm -hmm. And now my brush will be clean. Okay. Okay. So all you want to do is paint your, your masses that you have uh, so carefully mixed. People think that the idea of painting is that you will have some sort of a, a certain way to use the brush in order to do the painting. But all you have to do is fill in the mass. See, I am filling in this mass with the, um, the current color. It's more about being able to mix the colors to the correct intensity and value. And when you get the, and then all you have to do is kind of fill in the masses. I don't know if that is very clear. 
But okay. what I don't want you to think is that there's some special way to use the brush because there's not. Okay. If you look at 100 different painters, there will be 100 different ways that they have used the brush. And use the biggest brush possible. I do have different size brushes. I this just use that one? Yeah, use that one and maybe this one if you need a smaller, a smaller brush. I think I'm done with the dark green. Very good. So you're here in 2019 for the first time, right? Yeah, 2019 to January. In January of 2019. Mm -hmm. Howdy. You guys down there or what? I have my gallery out in Rock Spring. I'm up right up the road up here. I see you once in a while. Let me give you my card. All right. I'm, my name's Kyle Martin and this is Zebu. Hi. Yeah, I'm a his student right now. Oh, are you? Yeah. yeah. He's definitely see what he's doing there. Yeah. It's pretty good. Draw me a line sometime. I got my studio five miles from here. I'm out on the Schneider Road. I live on the family farm out there. All right. All right. You have a good day. Yeah. Thank you. Bye-bye. 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 What a nice guy. I can see like you started to have like different kind of layers and everything. But you keep it simple because Zibu, for you today, it is more important that you have something very simple to react to. As you progress, you will add more and more. What is the color for cloud? Is it just a full white? I... What did I mix? Warm white with a little bit of blue, under your advice. And it was a, a touch of the blue. Are you familiar with the idea of refraction? Refraction? Yeah, refraction of light. It's the idea where if you observe a spoon that is in a glass of water, it will appear that it is bent. Yeah, I know. Because an idea that happens when I am observing the bluffs, I will see a very intense blue-green color at the very top of the bluff. I'm not saying you have to see it. I'm just saying that's something that I see. Can you say that again? It's so quick. I am seeing the idea that the light is bending over the top of the bluff and it is creating a very intense blue-green color as the light bends over the top of that distant bluff. And of course, this is seen through many layers of atmosphere. How but... do you keep the shape of the white? That's very good. It's okay. You will redefine it with negative space. When you come in with the blue of your sky, mm -hmm. you will redefine that space. Oh. It's called negative space. Very often, it is better to redefine your positive space. Positive space referring to the shape of the cloud. Mm -hmm. You will redefine that with the negative space of the sky around it. Oh, so it's better to, uh, it's better to do like the sky. Mm -hmm. Because and then when you mix it, you start to have that kind of feeling that okay, so the clouds is inside the sky. But there really is no secret. It's just okay. you just have to do it. Sorry if that was confusing. No, it's not confusing. I understand exactly what you're talking about. Because I think they want you to kind of uh, be hard and to kind of un uncover the truth for them. When the truth is just an inner truth. And I like that uh, answer for sure. Because like. The truth is the thing they had to figure out. Oh, it's a philosophy. The reason that we work on location in this way is we want to exist with the truth of nature. And that's what we're doing as we paint today on location. And when you put that truth onto a panel, people will love it and they will see truth too. Did the fly go on your paint? Yeah, I'm, I'm my and then just take the, just on if any person is interested in art or painting or sculpture, maybe they will pursue it. And maybe they will have the 
the interest to stick with it even when things get hard. And ability is not as important as sticking with it through the long run. I think I messed it up. The quality and the texture of your brush strokes are very good, okay? And I'm telling you to use the big brush because I like this quality of very thick mark, okay? It's very good. It could be the guy that could be the doorman to open the door for the new beginner. It's kind of like teaching. You feel like this person, he really wants to learn. Yeah. And they had the ability to kind of uh, to push him a little bit further. Yeah, and so why not? Yep. So right now, the one thing I understand is I never expect anything. Mm -hmm. so I never really force myself all oh, this thing has to happen in my life. Right. I just focus on what I can focus. Mm -hmm. If there's something I stick with, never lie, be kind. Mm -hmm. And then just you know, sometimes you gotta grind. Yep. Uh, and then the good thing will happen. If you are a good person or something. Yeah. So when I was in like uh, the first grade, yeah, first grade, like when I first come here uh, in this teaching program, in the one article we read, it's about like actually how much you will earn or like how successful you will be. It's not depends on like your degrees sure. or your knowledge. It really depends on your character. Yes. I don't believe that when I first read that read that article. Mm -hmm. I feel like oh, it depends on how much you know about coding. You know. Right. You know how much you know about economies so you can earn big money. Mm -hmm. And then right now, I mean, at the age of 25, I just feel like more and more. The more important thing is about you're going to be a good person, you know, how to communicate, um, you know, how to deal with, uh, you know, the struggles and the chaos and uh, unexpected things in your life. Life is hard. The thing is, I've been said this in the program, in order to be a good teacher, you have to be a good person first. Okay, so... Do you think you'll take more school? Uh, what do you mean? You said maybe you'll study history. Yeah, that, I think I will. But uh, yeah, nope. it's gonna be like a plan that I just had been thinking about, but I know it's gonna be hard. Yeah. I guess I'm gonna you know, to read a lot of books in these five years before 30, because I don't think I can do 30. You can't do 30? <laughs> well, I can't really do like, Right now, it's kind of my prime time. Mm -hmm. I don't really know. I mean, the next five years, I think it's probably pretty critical for me. Mm -hmm. Gotta grab that. Uh, I mean, right now, if you look at it, this color mm -hmm. is, I'm not sure, I want to make it like green. Just a little bit of that lemon yellow will make it more green. How do you like working with the palette knife to mix the colors? Yeah, pretty good. I like that. It's a nice tool, right? That's a nice color. That's well observed for that field. One day we'll paint in uh, Beijing together.